those familiar scenes on surveillance video. This one, a store clerk confronting two intruders. 14 shots are fired. Do you know who is hit, who is not, and why? And what about all those rampages in the past few months? In a mall, in a church, at a home in Pittsburgh where the shooter fires off 98 shots in under two minutes. No wonder more and more ordinary people are talking about getting a gun to protect themselves. But police are saying, think about it before you do. Video games and, and movies, you know, they, they glorify gunfights and they get that warped sense that this is true. This video game is exactly what I can do in real life. That's not reality. Police investigator Chris Benton, firearms instructor Glenn Dorney, along with the Bethlehem, Pennsylvania Police Department, agree to work with ABC News on an experiment to test the ability of average people without crisis training to react and protect themselves with a gun under stress. It was inspired by a real incident at Northern Illinois University last year when a former student opened fire in a lecture hall, killing five other students and wounding 22. Door just kicks open like a movie. Boom! Shocking blast. So with that in mind, we came to Muhlenberg College in Pennsylvania and sent out word that police were offering free gun training. From the interested students, we chose six, with gun experience ranging from none at all to more than 100 hours. The gun, by the way, is real. It's a Glock, but the bullets are not. They're a kind of plastic filled with paint. Okay, good. A holster? The police go over the basics getting the gun out of the holster, getting the target in sight. And you should know that our basic course is already more hands-on training than almost half the states in the country require to carry a concealed weapon. Which hit is mine? Now it's time to begin our experiment. First up, Joey Dolan, who loves action movies and has spent countless hours firing a gun that shoots plastic pellets called an airsoft gun. Joey thinks he'll be good at deploying a weapon. Okay, you're the only person in the group that has a weapon. We tell Joey that he has the gun to defend himself and others, but later in the day. All right, let's get rolling here, guys. For now, he's to attend a lecture class on protective gear. He has no idea what will happen here, nor that there are hidden cameras in the lecture hall. We notice he's nervous. He can't seem to keep his hand off the gun. No. He also doesn't know that these other students around him are in fact cops or people working for ABC who will replicate the chaos of real people in real crises. The lecturer casually begins talking about protective headgear. Okay, I cannot stress enough that if you told you I'd be back. Suddenly the room is under attack, the instructor is down, a student hit, Joey struggles to get his gun out, but it's stuck in his shirt. He can't even get it out to aim it. Stop, Axel, stop, Axel. Had this event been real, Joey would have been killed in the first five seconds. Or there's the chance the bad guy would simply have taken his gun from him. That was the first shot, uh -huh. and then the second shot was right in the chest. That so-called armed intruder was our firearms instructor, Glenn Dorney. Did you ever get your gun out of the holster? I got it out of the holster, and it was stuck in my shirt. Joey says his endless hours of practice with an airsoft gun meant absolutely nothing. Honestly, like with my airsoft gun, I can shoot the target every time, dead on. But this is just completely different. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Don't get discouraged with these. It takes practice. And it's not just Joey. Yeah, Police tell us that even this. for them, handling a gun in a holster can be tricky if you don't stay in practice. This video is a police officer giving a safety demonstration to some kids at a local school. Hey, I'm the only one in this room professional enough that I know of to carry this Glock 40. I'm the only one. No more. Is everybody all right? He literally shoots himself in the foot while placing the gun back in the holster. So how much more difficult is all this for Danielle, a novice who did very well in our basic training? Pull the helmet on. Same scenario, she thinks she has the gun for later. And suddenly an armed intruder bursts into the room. I told you I'd be back. Danielle has no trouble getting her gun out and shooting. Actual stop, actual stop. But here's Danielle's problem. A weapon alone won't save you if your body's in the wrong place. Take a look. When Danielle starts to shoot, she stands up. Did you get me or something? Yeah, that's... How'd you get me? show you. Oh, wow. She took a deadly hit to the head. 
Could I thought you... I was in the middle of like a murder scene. Like okay. I literally thought like I was straight came straight out of a movie. Okay. And that's uh, Was I, it realistic? It was very realistic. Okay. Yeah. My heart is still pounding. Okay. <laughs> She's also confused about whether her shot hit the intruder. I think I hit you in the head. Um okay. And you yeah. think it was the head? Wasn't it at the top of the Oh, I got you there. Nowhere near the head. And it was even worse for Brian, our third student. We have two shooters enter the room. Had it with you. Brian freezes in his seat, hands on his desk. Police aren't surprised. In seconds, Brian is peppered with bullets, one to the head, one to the heart, two on the shoulder, one in the arm. If no one ever gets hit in the movies, obviously. Real life, so I got hit like five, six times. What happens is when you, you get so jacked up that you tend to forget how to do the simple things because your body elevates, your fine motor skills deteriorate, and you can't get that gun out. And you're thinking, oh, there's a gun, I'm getting shot at, you know, and you're not going to be able to do this. Take a look at the way your own body undermines your decisions, your accuracy with a gun in crisis. Under extreme stress, your blood is actually pulled from your skin toward your muscles in case you need to flee. Your heart pumping three to four times the normal rate. Your hands have less blood, they're less dexterous, your reaction's delayed. Okay. When police show me a video used with real police trainees, you have just arrived at an unknown trouble call. My task is to watch the policewoman who's my virtual partner check out a suspicious car and react if there's a need for self-defense. Yes! The first time, I don't get near firing, but on the second time, yes! even when I know what's going to happen, I'm two seconds late. The interesting thing is, even the second time around, yeah. knowing exactly you knew what was the timing happen. of everything, you still can't get there in time. Which is why police can spend months and months speeding up their reaction time until it's no more than one second, and building muscle memory that overtakes all that racing blood during a crisis. Rounds coming back at you. You got outside environments. People are screaming, running. You know. <laughs> it's too much for a normal person who's never been trained to, to deal with. It's, it's overwhelming. And I got Overwhelming, as at Columbine, 10 years ago this month. Real shooters, so much confusion. So back at our experiment, we now turn to the most experienced student in our group, gun enthusiast Chris Lamb, who told us he has hundreds of hours of experience with guns on the range. Rifles, pistols, revolvers all the different types of conventional firearms. If anyone has a right to be confident, it's Chris. Chris takes cover instantly, the right thing to do, but then watch, even he freezes in place, can't get his gun out in time, and is in effect executed at close range. This would have been a failure, absolute failure. No wonder police stress, if you want a gun for self-defense, you have to train as they do under stress and without letting up. Even police officers through extensive training, if you don't continue with your training, ongoing training, it's a perishable skill. You'll lose it. How long before you're going to lose it, even at your level of training? If you go for a month to two months without training, you lose it. I really don't think that there was any benefit of me having the gun as opposed to not having it. it if anything, it, opened me, it made me more susceptible to being shot. And by the way, remember that surveillance video we showed you earlier? Even though the store clerk and the intruder fired 14 shots, not one of their shots came close, even at this range. And still ahead, we'll ask, what does keep you safe in a gun assault? And more of our experiments with students and something else that can go terribly wrong.